Okay. Again, if you remember, I again introduce myself. My name is Behruz. That's my first name, Behruz. My last name is Nazir. N A Z E O. A couple of days ago, or late afternoon, my wife was making uh, some fish for dinner. And then, as you can see, my little picture down here. So she was adding, she was adding vinegar to it. So let me see if I can. I took a couple pictures. Sorry, the paper is moving. This it seems moving. But anyway, so there's one of them. So she's adding basically. She's adding vinegar and some other sauce to to the fish. So that reminded me of the smell. So why fish smells? Why fish smells? So I learned this long time ago, and has something with the the nature of the fish. Has something to do with the nature of the fish, and uh, why we have that smell. And human and the cooks basically learn to overcome that fish. For this presentation, I'm using a program that I'd really like to ask you to learn. It's called Visualizer. And then I use my camera, which is the iPhone, as a document camera. I found it's actually easier for me to to write on a piece of paper. I'm moving the paper right now. So I move to I put the paper here. Use a sharpie to draw. It's like being in the classroom and drawing on the whiteboard. It makes it easier for me than drawing on the on the computer. So back to the fish. So what we have for the fish is the smell. Uh, the cooks and other people learned early on. So a long time ago, uh, the cooks and people cooking and uh, baking fish realized that if you add, so you have a smell, you have a smell. At that point, we didn't know what the smell comes from. But if they find out if you put vinegar, how do you spell vinegar, I guess? E -A vinegar or lemon juice. There is no smell. So the smell basically goes away. So, of course, we, we didn't know chemistry a lot at that time. But it was real. So the smell that fish has, if you put the vinegar, uh, the smell goes away. You cannot really smell it at that point. So there's, of course, chemistry. And this chemistry is very interesting to share with you and relates to what we're going to learn in this class. So this chemistry involved with the smell. So the smell basically comes from a chemical comes from the fish. We can, we'll talk about that in a second. It's called trimethylamine. Tri means three of them. Methyl group is an organic compound, CH3, and it's a functional group we call it amine. So this trimethylamine has a very low boiling point. Low boiling point. Now something that you might have learned in general chemistry something low boiling point in high school you might learn. It has high what we call a high vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure is very high. So the barrier is very high. So if you let's say you put this trimethylamine in a beaker it actually is not a liquid, it's almost a gas. So they, it evaporates quickly. 
And then we have our nose here. Where's my nose? <laughs> <laughs> so we can really smell it. We can really smell it. So the, we need to ask ourselves. So what happened to this uh, trimethylamine? First of all, how did we make it, or how the fish makes it? And and it has a high vapor pressure or low boiling point. So how what do we do? What does vinegar actually do, or lemon juice do to this trimethylamine? Later on, we're going to learn in our class also that trimethylamine basically is a base. So the trimethylamine, what we call a functional group, is a base, or category is a base. Vinegar or lemon juice are acid. So we really, in this sort of a smell, removing the smell from the fish, we do an acid-base reaction. And then we, what we call this acid-base reaction, what we call is a, we neutralizing. How do you spell that? Neutralization, neutralization. And these are all in chapter four or textbook. So in chapter four of textbook, we're going to learn how to do this reaction. If, how much base we have, how much acid do we need, and we're going to use that little uh, know-how here for the fish. And just to show you and share with you things we do every day in kitchen, in brushing routine in the morning, everything has to do something with the chemistry, or most of them. Not everything, but most of them deals with chemistry. So if I move this thing over here, doesn't move, the mouse doesn't move. For a second. Okay. So what scientists actually discover, remember fish lives in water. And in the water or ocean or lakes, pressure is very high. So we have a high pressure when the fish, especially at the bottom, has to fight that pressure. And also oceans, most oceans, not the lakes, but oceans, have very high concentration of sodium chloride or salt. So what fish has, not a very good drawer as you can see. So let's say this is a cell of the fish. And if you have biology class, you know what the cells are. But the difference now in the cell of the fish is that, from us, is that what they have, it's a chemical compound, we call it TM, and I have to talk about that in TMAO. So that cell basically is protected. So this cell is protected against the sodium chloride and high pressure in the water. And then, of course, as a chemist, we can go and, and find out what that TM, moving my paper a little bit, so we, we're going to figure out what this TM, move this a little bit here, sorry. So we need to look at this TMAO. So chemists, we like a structure. And we find out what the name stands for. So the name stands for trimethylamine oxide. Tri methyl amine oxide. And then we need to know the structure of this trimethylamine oxide. So the trimethylamine oxide, as the name applies, has a nitrogen, trimethyl group, remember I was talking about that, 
And then there is the oxygen. Now, later on, we're going to learn something what we call in chemistry, formal charge. Formal charge help us, it help us to find out, find out the chemical structures. Chemical structure is the important part of this class. We're going to talk about that. So the chemical structure, TML, basically is made of a nitrogen. I should have drawn this a little bit different. I'll redraw this. Carbon, carbon, carbon. And each carbon has three hydrogen. Now nitrogen is also attached to an oxygen. And we're going to learn very soon, we have to, that this oxygen, what we call a formal charge of negative charge, and nitrogen is positive. So again, these are all what we call a Lewis structure of TMO. So this is called Lewis, was the chemist name. He was a good, beautiful chemist, a strong, uh, clever chemist, came up with this proposal to draw structures. So we're using basically letters, nitrogen, N, carbon, C, hydrogen, H, identify how many we have, and etc., etc. And it's, I call it handicap. So we need to put a positive charge here and a negative charge here. Now, so what this is TML, so what it, once we draw the structure, what we add the units, we have a carbon units, hydrogen units, nitrogen and oxygen. We add all of them together as the mass of them. And we realize that now this TML, what we call the molecular weight, and we need that molecular weight of the TML is 75. Point one. And then in the next like little talk, I'm going to tell you what we're going to use that for number of moles and etc. So this TMO basically, when it's exposed to air, light, etc., it decomposes and become a trimethylamine that I mentioned before. So this become a nitrogen. Only three methyl group. The oxygen is gone. Oxygen is gone. And we put extra electron here, so we'll talk about that later on. Move my paper over here. So this is what the smell is actually. Remember, this has a very uh, low boiling point, and we can smell it. Now this is a base and react with basically when we add vinegar. Vinegar is basically acidic acid would be called. So we have C H three C double bond O O H. Again I should always show my electrons, extra electrons. So the combination of Vinegar, which is acidic acid, move my paper up a little bit, which is, and this is an acid, forms a salt of the acidic acid or vinegar. So this really forms a CH, H, H, C double bond O, O negative now. We want to learn all this. Thing. And this Trimethylamine becomes adding an H to it. So that H came from the acidic acid or vinegar. So this now becomes NH methyl group, methyl group, methyl group. Again, nitrogen has no extra bond. So this would be positive. So now combination of vinegar, acidic acid, and trimethylamine is a salt. So this salt really has 
very low vapor pressure. Low vapor pressure means that the salt has no smell versus trimethylamine has smell, which we don't like. Most of people don't like that. So we go from a smelling compound, sorry, got a little bit busy here, from a smelling compound to a no smell by just adding a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice or other acid, orange, to our fish. So we make a salt and the salt doesn't have any smell. So we start with the salt from the fish, which we call TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. It decomposes when we bring it to room temperature and uh, sun and heat to make trimethylamine. And that's the source of a smell from the fish because it had high vapor pressure. We add vinegar to it or citric acid, which is in lemon juice. We make a salt and that salt doesn't have any smell because it has a low vapor pressure. So basically we don't smell it. Hope this was okay. Now the next slide I'm going to use some calculation for example. So if I use let's say 100 gram fish and we know how much TMO it has, how much vinegar or acidic acid do we need? So that's the calculation we need to use and learn in chapter four. Thank you. Talk to you soon.